So now we're going to focus on that hard part of the graph that we have kind of skipped over uh, in recent problems because it is the trickiest part. What do you do if when you're titrating, you're before the equivalence point? So you've added, in this particular problem, we've added a, a little bit of acid to our flask containing our weak base. Because the reaction has started, but we're not at the equivalence point yet, we have the excess NH3 in the flask, and we do have some NH4 plus that has formed. And so we have both a base, NH3 and an acid, NH4 plus, that are both in that flask at the same time. So how do you handle that situation? We're going to first figure out your reaction between your acid and your base, depending on what you're titrating there, right? In our particular problem that we're doing right now, we're doing NH3, a weak base with hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. So this is what's going on in our problem. What we want to do is figure out the moles of both our acid and base and figure out which chemical is the limiting reactant. Uh, so we have a volume and a molarity that will allow us to figure out the moles of each chemical that we have. Because in our particular problem, they're reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio, you could just look and see which whatever one has the smaller number of moles is going to be your limiting reactant. Then uh, you can compare the number of moles that you need to react with your limiting reactant versus the amount of moles that you have and figure out the moles of excess reactant that you have left over. Once you have that, um, you're going to do a stoichiometry problem, starting with that limiting reactant to figure out how many moles of the conjugate acid or base are being formed. Convert those moles into molarities. And then there's those ice tables again to figure out that uh, what the H3O plus or the OH minus is going to be and solve from there. So the, the part of the graph that we're focusing on right now is this part that's highlighted in yellow where this is your buffer zone. Oop. Right here. Here's your buffer region. So it's before the titration. It's the titration started. You've added a little bit of, in this case, acid to our base, uh, but that we're uh, not quite. We're not quite at the equivalence point yet. All right. This particular graph is up here: weak acid, strong base. Ours is the reverse. Um, our graph looks something like this. Right, so if here's the equivalence point, we're focusing on, we've started the titration, but we're not at the equivalence point yet. Okay. So let's see where this goes. So it asks us to copy the reaction from number 11 above. Number 11 above is the reaction between our weak base and our strong acid. So that would make some NH4 plus and some water. We want to figure out the number of moles of each of those reactants. So when we're looking at part B on that graph, we're looking at, we've added 15 milliliters of acid to our 20 milliliters worth of NH3. So just a little bit of factor label here. 15 milliliters of HCl. If you have a thousand milliliters of that HCl, there's 0 0.0120 moles worth of HCl there. We have 0 0.00018 moles worth of H3O plus. 
At this point in our titration, there's 20 milliliters of that ammonia in the flask. And for every 1,000 milliliters of that ammonia, there's 0 0.0180 moles. So we have 0.00036 moles worth of NH3. Because the H3O plus and the NH3 react in a one-to-one -one ratio, as you can see in part A above, that must mean that the H3O plus is our limiting reactant. We're going to run out of that first because we've only added 0.00018 moles worth of it to our flask. Because there's a one-to-one -one ratio between our NH3 and our H3O+, that means that out of that 0 0.00036 moles of ammonia that we have, only 0 0.00018 of those are going to actually react. So if we have 0 0.00036 moles worth of ammonia to start, but only 0 0.00018 moles worth of that NH3 are going to react with our H3O+. That means that we have 0 0.00018 moles worth of NH3 left over. It wants to point out to you, notice how the amount of moles that have reacted equals the amount of moles still remaining. This is because we are at the midpoint, halfway to the equivalence point. In other words, half of the NH3 has reacted, half of it still remains. That's a special point on a titration curve, the midpoint. And so we're going to, it says to label the volume that that takes on graph number, in graph number two. So the volume of NH3 that we've added at this point is, or sorry, excuse me, the volume of HCl that we've added at this point is 15 milliliters. So if you go back to this graph number two, you can see on here. It's here somewhere. Oh my goodness, this is a big document, right? Here it is. Um, here's that 15 milliliters. It's the halfway point, right? If it takes 30 milliliters to reach our equivalence point, we need half that volume to be at the midpoint. What we're going to do next is figure out what the pH is at that midpoint. If you look up at the equation in part A, there's a one-to-one -one ratio between the NH3, the H3O+, and the NH4+. So you could do this one of two ways. You could say that you know that there's 0 0.00018 moles worth of NH3 reacting, and because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the moles of NH3 and moles of NH4 plus that you would have the same number of moles of NH4 plus. You could also, if I copy this and paste, right? We also know that at this point in the problem that 0 0.00018 moles worth of H3O plus has reacted. Either way, we know 0 0.0018 moles worth of NH4 plus will have formed at this point in the titration.